So welcome everyone, Steve here. You are either watching or listening to the Embracing Brokenness Ministries video and audio podcast. Welcome. You are catching us in the middle of a series that we've entitled Sexual Brokenness and the Church. Today's topic will focus on the brain and the impact that pornography has on the brain. So we're going to do this a little differently this time around, and I will turn it over to Colleen in just a second. But I want you to consider engaging with us in this journey. Uh, I've encouraged it before, and I want to encourage it again. If you have anything particular you would like us to discuss, send us an email, info at embracingbrokenness.org, or in the comment section of however it is you're either watching or listening to this video and audio. So thank you again, and please be a part of our conversation. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, thanks, Steve. So just to kind of go further around these brain changes that Steve is mentioning, as we're looking at porn's impact on the brain, three really powerful things that we are seeing in the brain that actually gives us the ability to equate pornography usage to any other kind of drug usage. We actually now have scientific evidence that porn is impacting your brain no different than heroin or cocaine or gambling ad addiction, any other kind of addiction. And it's because pornography is, is having implications on our reward circuitry, which involves our do dopamine receptors. We can see that clearly in the brain. We can actually see some of the neuroplastic changes um, that are happening in the brain. And as we've talked before in the transformational Christian journey, God is moving us away from self-centered kinds of love that target our fear circuitry and transformation move be, is moving back to God, to other-centered agape kind of love. And pornography quickly moves us to the self-centered form of love. And so it's working against our transformational process. And finally, we're seeing in the brain some of the scientific backup to con scriptural concepts that we know um, like being turned over to a reprobate mind. We can actually see some of the evidence in the brain that backs up scripture. And so we want to point those things out today um, just to really start to explore the individual, the internal consequences of the consumption of pornography. There is a Princeton University professor. His name is Dr. Satinover. And this was a really cool quote that I found um, of his. And he's talking about pornography and he says, it is though we have devised a form of heroin usable in the privacy of one's own home and injected directly to the brain through the eyes that, you know, again, it's, it's a little bit more socially acceptable. It can be hidden in shame and privacy at home. But again, no difference than what we're seeing, the implications on the body and on the brain looks very similar to what's happening um, with heroin. Let's take a look at the brain image of somebody who's using pornography. Um, actually, it's a comparison between healthy volunteers and people who are compulsive pornography users. And you can really see um, what I'm gonna talk about with dopamine receptors. And so um, Dr. Meharis actually starts to talk about the reward circuitry of the brain in terms of dopamine by saying, when someone is prone to addiction, such as what you're going to see in these images, the person gets overstimulated by dopamine and his brain actually starts to destroy some of the dopamine receptors. So we use pornography, some of our dopamine receptors get destroyed. This makes the person feel depleted, so to go back to more pornography, but having fewer receptors, it, it requires more um, porn to get the same dopamine th thrill. Eventually, this causes the brain to destroy more receptors, and then the person even feels a greater need for pornography to receive the same amount of stimulation. And that's pretty much a common um, thing that happens with drugs and with addiction is that we start to require more and more dopamine for less and less thrill, as he says, or happiness generated. And so you can see this deteriorating spiral um, that occurs. And in these images, there's a clear difference in the brain activity between the patients who have the compulsive sexual behavior uh, and, and healthy volunteers. That looks no different than any other drug. So 
Porn has implications for our dopamine, dopamine being the drug that actually reinforces learning. I think it's interesting about dopamine that you can see it both, most if you're training a dog, for example, and we found this in, if you're familiar with Pavlov's theory, that we go to what gets rewarded and we can train behavior. Porn actually has a way that it is training us to release dopamine. And actually we start to re release dopamine when we get triggered in the anticipation of the reward that's gonna come. And it actually puts us into this spiral effect that we no longer find pleasure in normal things and instead are looking for these huge dopamine hits. Um, and eventually it leads us to oftentimes not even be happy because you know we're trying to get this response and we've actually negatively impacted our dopamine receptors. The other thing that's really fascinating to me, the field of neuroplasticity, um, if you're not familiar, many really good YouTube videos, uh, just quick videos to explain this concept and the super highways of the brain. We are gonna watch a video um, here um, from a group of experts, only a quick two minute video, but they're talking about some of these brain changes that happen. And so let's turn over to this video, take a look at it, and we'll be right back to discuss um, what some of this means. The brain is a, a fascinating machine, really. In terms sure. of brain plasticity, everything that we do each and every day shapes our brain. We call it neuroplastic, just as plastic is changeable and malleable we can change the shape of the brain. And I actually did a study recently on this. So we put people in the scanner and we looked at their brain structure and associated this brain structure with the amount of pornography they consume. So basically we found in our study that the gray matter in the reward center is generally smaller in those people who watch more porn. We've seen that with multiple addictions from methamphetamine to cocaine, others, and now with pornography addiction. It's almost as if the brain is saying, I like pleasure but you're killing me, this is too much. My hypothesis was that the ventral striatum and the reward region should be bigger in those people watching pornography. And it's exactly the other way around, so... Um... Were you shocked? Yes, yes. <laughs> there is solid research to show that brain functioning changes. The more you watch uh, pornography, then you, you can get a, a blip up when the pornography is totally new but totally new soon becomes old as you, as you watch that. People need to watch more or get more interesting and novel stuff to get the same level of activity in the reward system. Yeah, you know, so it's a paradox. When it starts out, the porn is turning you on and the more porn you watch, the less likely you are to get aroused. Which seems to indicate that the, the normal, regular thing you were used to isn't sufficient anymore. The wonderful thing about the human mind is the power of curiosity to invent, to create, but what pornography does is it puts a straitjacket on our mind to say, no, this is the only thing I'm interested in. And then ultimately that any kind of compulsion is destructive. Okay, so welcome back. That is just such a powerful video. I hope that that really um, kind of helped you understand a little bit about what's happening neuroplastically in our brain. A couple things just to point out that I love from that video. There's one quote that says, we love pleasure, but it's almost as if the dopamine is and the neuroplastic changes coming um, as the brain restructures dopamine's released neurons fire together the brain is restructured your brain is saying i like pleasure but you're killing me and so powerful quote it is too much pleasure um, with what is being released and what needs to happen i think one of the other things that i really liked in that video is like porn puts a straitjacket on your mind okay so a straitjacket and the only thing that can bring you pleasure anymore is more porn. So we go from multiple things that are created to be pleasurable for us to this high level need that is not a normal range of pleasurable activities like eating and conversation, different things. It straight jackets us to only one reward system and we need more and more and more. Um, another thing that was pointed out is the totally new quickly becomes old and you need more and more and more. And what we know about porn, when we track people who have porn addiction, even you know recently it was really heartbreaking, we're seeing more and more of this in the media, um, which is adults having sex with children. 
you know, behind most of those places of pedophilia, it, you will find that people start out with normal porn use and whatever normal is, but they'll start out with porn adults very similar to them. And eventually, as they give themselves over to, over to that, they need different kinds of porn. And so you'll see this movement towards more perverse forms of pornography, younger people involved in pornography. And before you know it, you cross over this line of adult women who have pig, you know, pigtails and look like little girls to actual little girls. And the next thing you know, you're actually having sex with a live child. And so the perversion of what it takes to just reward dopamine is this really, really perverse path. And so it's a, it's a slippery slope and it's a pretty quick one of what can happen um, as the brain is given over to the straitjacket of going, this is the only way I can be happy anymore. I need more and more and more of this new drug. And then finally, um, I would say around this whole thing of neuroplasticity, and I, I just love this, your amygdala in your brain is actually the fear center of your brain that says fight, flight, you know, or freeze. And a lot of us have broken amygdalas because of all the trauma that we've experienced. And, um, and the interesting thing about the amygdala is when we're in fight or flight, the higher level functionings of the brain, specifically our prefrontal cortex, cannot be activated so we can reason correctly. Um, it is the place where we can be calm and peaceful and connect with God. And I think it's actually the place in the brain where true transformation can come because we can sit in the presence of our maker and be filled up and healed. And so porn activates the amygdala. So your prefrontal cortex can't even get calm to meet with God, to be filled. And so we move from it's all about me, amygdala, 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 to uh, and away from God being able to fill me up. Powerful, powerful place for the enemy to start to distort our transformation processes through that alone. The last thing I'd like to talk about um, is just the spiritual consequences of porn use. You know, I have always been interested in this scripture. Romans 1.28 says, furthermore, this is NIV version, Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind or reprobate mind so that they do what they ought not, what ought not to be done. That whole thing, and you're going to see in a minute, we're going to take a look at another quick video clip of what this brain looks like that is actually being seared and turned over to a reprobate mind. You know, when people say, tell me why it's bad to just view porn a little bit. And I think, you know, with any kind of sin and viewing pornography is sin, um, but with any kind of activity that we engage in, I think we've got the Holy Spirit knocking pretty loud. Hey, don't do that. Not a good idea. And every time we give in to that sin, the loud knocking becomes quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter until eventually we don't even hear the knocking anymore. And we're turned over at that point to a depraved or reprobate mind. We have not heard um, the voice of God saying, please don't do this. This is a problem. And eventually we're turned over and all kinds of perversion can come out of that. And so I want to take a look, um, at one last video clip, uh, just to end, but this is Dr. Timothy Jennings. He wrote a book called the God shaped brain. And it really talks a little bit about this journey, um, transformational journey of how we're impacting circuitry in the brain uh, from the fear center to the love center. Um, but here's one of the quotes that he, that he uses to kind of introduce this video clip. The part of the brain that gives conviction of wrongdoing and redirects inappropriate behavior on a genetic and molecular level and structural level changes such that it stops responding they get less and less conviction of guilt, less and less anxiety and stress at doing it. And pretty soon they become numb and there's no guilt at all. That to me is the full representation of what we hear in Romans 128. Um, and so let's take just a quick look at a video um, that, that Dr. Jennings does to kind of demonstrate this concept of being turned over, your conscious being seared, being turned over to this kind of mind. I have people in my office that have affair after affair after affair. They cheat on their spouse over and over and over again, or they're involved in porn. They're ashamed. 
Why are they ashamed? Because on some level, they're not at peace with what they're doing. It is a moral failing, and people know they're doing this moral failing. But when we make those types of decisions, it actually causes changes in the brain. It activates the fear circuitry of the brain. This is called the amygdala. And when the amygdala activates it and, and stays active chronically, it actually impairs the love circuits of the brain, interior cingulate cortex. We become more self-oriented. So when somebody looks at porn for the first time, what happens is they'll get an excitement, but they'll also have the orbital cortex fire and tell them this is inappropriate. Don't do this. And they'll have an apprehension or tension associated with it as well. If they chronically expose themselves to porn, this is very fascinating, there is actually a molecular change occurring on a genetic level in the orbital cortex of the brain where a protein that was not really expressed there before um, called delta Fos B actually alters the expression here and, and causes a desensitization. What this actually means then, if you want to use a biblical in inference here, is that their consciences are becoming seared. And the part of the brain that gives conviction of wrongdoing and redirects inappropriate behavior on a genetic and molecular level and structural level changes such that it stops responding. They get less and less conviction of guilt, less and less anxiety and stress at doing it, and pretty soon they become numb and there's no more guilt at all. People who've damaged their pleasure centers in this way will often be disinterested in their healthy relationships will often become apathetic, and they will seek out more either high-risk behaviors or drugs or other types of things like this to stimulate the, the pleasure centers. So they can feel this. Now, rather than giving a, a time for these circuits to heal themselves, where they can actually then start experiencing pleasure in a normal way. Pretty powerful video. Um, I think it's amazing to hear that through our eyes, through our orbital um, lens, we actually are having this searing process that science is actually proving to us this searing phenomenon that we see uh, in the brain. Um, it, it's just, it's changing the brain. So we're not gonna leave you with, my goodness, if you've used pornography, if somebody you love is actively using pornography, um, it's a really bad thing and your brain has changed. Again, our message is that anytime you embrace your brokenness in whatever form it shows up, God is going to use that and he's going to use it to bring about transformation in your life. And so the journey and the hope is even embracing these destructive things, understanding that pornography is a smoke alarm telling you your house is on fire. Um, and actually paying attention to your pornography story can tell you a lot about your story of brokenness. Um, and there are many people who can help you to actually take what is meant for your destruction to actually be a really redemptive healing process for you. And so um, if you're kind of stuck, if this message is resonating with you, you are certainly welcome to reach out to us through um, the ministry website we would love to connect you with some resources that can help you, but we want you to know there is help, there is hope. God is a redemptive God, and brains being neuroplastic means they can change one direction, but God promises in the Bible that he actually can change us to that other-centered love, that healing model. And yes, his voice, even if your brain has been seared from this, his voice can come back. He wants to speak to you about this issue. And so hopefully this has been encouraging for you and also educational. Uh, many blessings to you as we continue on this journey of embracing our brokenness together.